What's that? I'm going to pause the music. No, it's okay. Yeah. Yo, it's good. We're here with young Maddie. Maddie, tell him what's up. Yo, the happy pill is what's up. Tell him oh, what they're what's supposed up. to do. Three critical steps. What are they? Three like, steps. comment, share, and of course, subscribe. This is four. It's actually four steps. We discussed this with Eric Sherman. If you were watching previous episodes. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Do it now. Uh, can I turn you the other way? And gentlemen, we had been uh, working head and arm chokes um, um, from mounted position. And then we went through a whole thing of a bunch of different details and getting this arm above their head, attaching here, dismounting, and then choking them out. And uh, over the weekend, I showed it, but I wasn't recorded. So I'd like to be able to put it on Happy Pill for people so they can understand like what happens in like these little sequences where the, ch where the person moves three, four inches. And I always say this. Three or four inches, the move is totally changed, like literally four inches. Um, and that's how the game, like that's what becomes like really elite read and reaction speed, where the game person moves just slightly and the angle of the arteries is different, right? So that's what we're attacking right now. So I'm just going to ask you to go left and right. So pretty simple. I'll recapture. I'll speak uh, quickly, but I'm not going to recapture the details other than to say them one time. Okay, I said to you, you were in a, you were in a side control position. I'm not going to mount this person unless I control that far side elbow. You will see it on video what a person mounts without the far side elbow. Two reasons. One is he's very aggressive and trying to get his points from a mounted position. A uh, high level player, it's very risky like to mount somebody and not understand where the far side elbow is. Okay, so I'm asking you, I never met this man before. I don't know his level of bridging, his strength. I don't know him. I've passed the first time and I'm in a side control position and I'm looking to mount and I feel like, hey, I'm going for mounting position. I don't mount if I don't know what happens happening with that far side elbow. So I've captured this far side elbow and there's a couple of things I told you were critical. I would love to be able to drive his chin this way. That's what I would love to do so that I limit him rotating this way. Secondly is sometimes I may need my hands together to, uh, to create more pressure, but sometimes, depending on his size, I may want this hand to be able to float so that when I'm driving this way, I almost have two feet on this side, meaning my head and this basing hand to float because I'm aggressively driving this knee through. I also want these two things for a reason. This hand I don't control right now. If I'm not that big and he's much bigger, there's a chance that he can launch me over the top. So I want to have some stability on this side that potentially he's got to launch me over these fingertips. It becomes harder. Okay, I can only play my percentages and what, what I have physically to work with. I have this back leg that's free right now. So that should be a driver to aggressively come over the top and mount him. Okay, so I'm not just sliding this leg back over. I'm aggressively pushing with this back leg because I do want him to aggressively go that way. So I have this floating hand that I'm pushing and pushing with this back leg and I'm exaggerating it, but that's really what I'm doing. I'm trying to get my kneecap to the mat. Now, once you get to the kneecap to the mat, there's two things that can happen. You can flip your hips no problem, you absolutely can. But if I've aggressively driven him so much this way, the likelihood is when I try to flip that hip, he probably is going to catch this foot. Could be, could not be. You're gonna have to read it and see where he is on an angle. Sometimes for whatever reason, they don't like their draw again and they start rotating back. And if they're doing that and they're flat here, that becomes easy for me to flip this foot far out, then bring it back into my grapes. But I don't know that. And now what I just described to you is actually a realistic in that moment in time that I'm driving so aggressively to get this kneecap to touch the mat. And now it's touched. So I'm having an issue of like, I'm wondering, damn, if I flip these hips, because you're thinking at this moment, this isn't just read and reaction. In the beginning, you just, you're just taught these moves. You're supposed to do them. And then you understand later in life, a little bit later, not later in life, but later as you start to understand the game a little bit more, you start to read it and go, okay, I'm not at that angle to do this one right now. So when that knee touches the mat, I'm going to ask you to bring your knee forward right over your elbow line and bring it back. So this is what I mean by it. I've driven this kneecap and touched it. Why can't I drive a little bit more and just bring this kneecap behind my elbow? So what I mean is just bring it up. 
right? So because now my toes are going to slide in backwards. And now I'm coming back into my grapes and bringing myself down. So that accomplished the same thing without me worrying about flipping my hips, okay? Now I've gotten to this point, and I told you we're only going to capture this one time. I'm going to ask you to climb this arm vertically. What you're trying to do is not go straight above. You're trying to climb counterclockwise or clockwise. What I want to affect is the lateral delt head. I'm not trying to fight his, his lap muscle where he hunkered down. I've gotten this arm to this point because I was aggressively driving. Now if you've gotten to this point, I never wanted to come back because then he'll lock up the, the, the lap muscle. And in order for me to hit this delt, I gotta go counterclockwise on a climb. Not that end of the world, I can dismount and, and if I needed to, reuse this hip as a driving lever to start bringing this arm back up. Once you're here and you, you in your grapes, this is a totally different climb. If you've ever done lateral raises, that lateral held, delt head weakens very quickly. So even if you just can't bring it up, you'll be shocked that after five or 10 seconds, how you start inching up, inching up. If you've ever done lateral raises, you'll see it in the gym all the time. These guys herking and jerking, trying to get big deltoids. And then after 10 strict uh, reps, all of a sudden 30 pounds, they gotta go swinging in and everything. It's the same thing, that lateral delt head is incredibly weak. So I'd love to be able to connect this bicep to this ear. Once you're climbing up, I'm gonna ask you never to reach your head to the far side. Everybody does it. They're taught and then in a pride that you tell them, don't do that, they'll still do it. They'll get so aggressive that they get the arm to this point and they think that they gotta reach their head over to secure this position so that they can latch their hands up. You don't have anything. And at the same time, I never put my chin on that side of my elbow line because if I start reaching to this point, What's my stabilizer on this side? And now I've brought my chin line over this side of the elbow. When he bridges, we're flying over together. And now you are just in a mountain that just went south. And you did it, he didn't do it, you did it. You reached your head over to that point. So at no point, my stabilizer's on this side right now, okay? Because I'm so committed to getting this arm here. But I have this hand on this side. So I was aggressively driving this way because what's the difference of where this leg is? I don't need a grape on this. You gotta understand, he needs, he needs this because he's gotta bridge that way to recover this elbow to start the process of knee elbow escaping. So this leg has no relevance to me. I can float that guy out far because at this point, that leg right now needs to get recovered, but it recovers from this elbow. So he doesn't have access to recover this leg. So once I've touched this position, I'm committed to this side. I don't want my hook here tight, and now I'm reaching on this side and the two of us are flying over. So I've made this commitment, I've attached him to this point. So now this one isn't the one that matters to me. It's him bridging this way to recover this elbow, okay? So stay right there for me. We said at this point, what I'm gonna do is once I've made this attachment, I make a wedge right behind the elbow line. I obviously wanna connect my hands, but I need my ear to get down here. You're not choking anybody out with your ear up here. All you're doing is squeezing his bicep into his temple. So why am I gonna dismount? I need you to get nice and low, and before you dismount, I need you to be hyper aware of where this artery is sitting here. I won't be able to readjust that artery the same way later. This side I can readjust a million times over. I gave you some tips on how to readjust. If you're short on this side, I said to you, you can do a couple of things. You can, your hands are like this anyway. I can put my hand down and start pulling my other hand. I can also Y wedge and fit you even tighter. I can also drop incredibly low and drive you up at an angle to kill, to kill the spacing on that side. This is all about pressure. This isn't about power, okay? So I'm sitting here on this artery. Now I told you to dismount, okay? I'm gonna feed you two moves and then we'll go through sequences later. When you're here, right, two escapes they do. They lace this hand under your belly and they turn into you, okay? Number two is they turn away. So I don't want either one to occur. 
So we're gonna, because we're so tight and cantilevered here like this, sitting on his side like this, I don't want him turning in or away. So there's a reason that when I sit and I butterfly and I bring this kneecap and wedge it under his hip, it's so that he can't turn into me. I also am putting a whole line of my body underneath here and I'm wedged so tight that I don't want him turning away. So I'm almost like a catamaran on a boat that I'm making myself incredibly leveraged on this side for two reasons. So that he doesn't turn away, but I also don't want him turning in because I can't let this artery go on this side. Okay, so I'm really very hyper focused of how I'm sitting and how I'm angled on him. This isn't about strength or just doing the move. I'm really understanding the mechanics of the move. So I've made myself a tight wedge. This leg right now, when you're dismounting, you shouldn't do this. I know that they show it and you'll watch it on YouTube over where a person's like this and they take this back leg and they butterfly this guy over the top and now they start driving in. Why would I ever disconnect my hips? And if he's a big, massive man, now there's this gap in between us. The two things happen. One is this lace happens because I let it happen because I brought my hips up. And number two is like, why do I want any disconnection? And this man's a, a big dude. And now he's got an explosive bridge that his whole life he's wrestled and he doesn't want to be on his back. And he's crewing, arching like crazy. I don't want to go over. Right? So why would I end up at any point bringing my hip line up to bet this butterfly over? I can get that butterfly over and accomplish what I wanted in the beginning by sliding this kneecap down. And now I'm gonna turn this kneecap into a tight wedge under this hip so he doesn't mechanically turn into me. So what you're seeing is this, I'm pulling this knee down and I'm sliding it underneath. At the same time I'm sliding it underneath, I want it as deep as possible so my backside heel is gonna pull it in. So when you see me coming through here, as I'm dropping this kneecap to pull in, this back leg is jamming and pulling it in tight so that I have as deep an insertion on this kneecap as possible because he's trying to buck into me to release this artery. Can't do anything about this side. This side is what it is. I own this side. My whole body's on this side. What I don't want to lose is that artery. So now when I've come into this wedge and I've been on, I'm squeezing him with this back leg because once I make this transfer from this instep that's on this side, the one I'm hitting, to this side of the hamstring, as I slide him out, now we're starting to cock that back leg to drive in. It becomes incredibly tight. And now the finish is there. But what he's going to do is he's going to lace this hand. And he's going to turn that way. And I made this reference the other day about, Saeed put me onto that podcast with Hodger Gracie. And it was a great podcast. I went on Lex Friedman. And then he talks about the simplicity of, of the choke. But then he goes into like, it's not that simple. It's like you understand the mechanics of the arteries. And then he could show you the move. And they're like, well, the simplicity of the move is like, ah, you, no, 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 no. You got to understand the volume of the, of the blood that's coming up. So right now, I'm going to show you the second move. So I described everything right now. And now we're going to go into you doing, you're going to do the move, okay? And then we're going to let him recover a little bit. And I'm going to explain to you how right now it happens. Before, when I was choking from this angle, right, I had some percentage of blood. So there's 40, 40, and 10, 10. That makes up the volume of the 100%. I basically need about 60% to put him to sleep. Right now, I told you that this artery was so critical to me because I'm going to dismount. And then there's a probability that maybe I got a 30, 40% pressure on here. And now I'm driving with this back leg up into this artery like this. I'm driving the skin and flesh up into this back, or this artery on this side. So that's what ends up putting him to sleep. But he's smart. He laces under me and he tries to turn on this angle here. And that's when I lose him because if I dismount at this point, when he turns, as I'm dismounting, he turns in here, and now I don't have this artery anymore, right? So as soon as I feel him make the turn, I'm sitting here like this. I'm going, okay, I'm gonna try to choke him from this side. But as I'm coming here, I feel that arm come through. And now he's starting to turn because I was about to dismount with this back leg. But I, look where the hand is already, it's there, right? So why do we have to, the reason I brought up the Hodger thing is, why do we have to come from this way now? Why can't I come from that way, right? So I'm applying the pressure from a different angle to still suffocate him. 
I was here anyway. So I'm going to show you what to do first with the legs. And then you'll understand like the science behind like why, what am I doing, what I'm doing. So I told you earlier, I wasn't going to go left or right until I knew where this artery was sitting here. So I really had a kind of, I don't care about the rest of the move. I want to know where this artery is sitting, okay? Earlier I told you about the importance of the, the elbow. Now I want to know what the importance of this artery is. So now when he turns on me, he's about to release the arteries if I come this way, okay? So I'm going to turn my angle the other way. So as I'm here, I'm about to drop this knee and see if I could turn him. But he's sliding underneath. Okay, perfect. He just did this. So if I dismount now and go into that thing, he's going to change the artery angle on the far side. So instead of coming here, I'm going to slide this kneecap up. And now we're juking just like this. But this back leg now, instead of the angle that I was coming in at, is going to butterfly to this hip. And I'm going to drive from the other angle up until finish this artery. You okay? Yeah. Right? So what I'm doing is actually butterflying here, but I'm coming up this way now to kill this artery. So I'm changing the angle. You counted correctly. And how I started the class was I told you the move changes in four inches. That was four inches. That wasn't more than that. So I, now I go back to the thing when I told you about Hodger. I understood exactly what Hodger meant. The simplicity of the move, but I just, all I'm doing is repositioning my angles. So I was going to come at the out, I was going to press here and come up here. But now you just countered me. You did the right counter. You had two counters at this point. There's no other ones. You're not somersaulting and getting on my back. That's not happening. Okay. There's no thing where like I come off and you'd come out. Like there's none of that. You either have to get, you have to either elbow escape or somehow you got to get me off of me. You can do a kipping. You can go a lot of different things, but you have to get me off of me. So you did the right thing. You made a turn on this. You were thinking, this is what you're thinking. This is what you should be thinking. You should be thinking that you're lacing this hand underneath. And as I'm making separation, those knee lines are coming in on the bottom already. Slide the other one in. Right? And now you're like this. And now when I dislodge, I'm like, you just messed up, man. You just totally went south on you. Because you didn't, first of all, like I explained this the other day, is that butterfly should have been here anyway, but things went south on you because your positioning was off. Um, so when it just describes like, hey, I'm accepting that you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna counter me, but I'm countering back, right? So we were here on this angle. Now I'm asking you to flip it. Two things, remember what I told you. This butterfly should be right here because that is the only way that you're going to have power to come up into this artery. That artery is already compressed. Ethan turned a little bit this way. So my collection on this is tight. It becomes whether I can get this up into this artery. But you should have been able to get up into this artery because you never should have dismounted if you didn't know where this artery was. Right? So one plays into the other one. I'm going to ask the bottom player in the beginning, right, to, to talk to you, right? Just don't do the move. Ask him, like, hey, man, where am I off? Like, am I off? Because in the beginning, go back to Hodger. you got to understand, like, man, this, okay, so this is the picture where I put this. i got to get this here, here, and this hand here, and that angle here. And then once I understand that, then I can start going, okay, I'm off here. i got to get back to this picture. And if my leg is i got to get back to this picture. Okay, let's partner up and try it. Let's do it. He escapes well. Um, he doesn't escape because I finish him. So if, if we went in a four-step cycle, I did everything right. I brought this up. I'm here like this. And now I go dismount and I finish. That'd be one, right, where I finish it from this angle. I would say one thing at this point. Um, do you, like, I know, I know, I, I see people like laying down like this and that, or keeping this leg here and driving in. Let me ask you this question. What if he does turn in, right? Like he starts turning in early and you made this mistake. You're sitting here with this leg low like this, like, and you're driving in. And now he turned too much. And like, what is he going to do? He's going to put his knees between us down here. Like, so why would I even, I mean, even if I don't ever want to lose dominant position, whether I fail at a submission, I still want to be able to sequence and stay dominant and reattack you at a different angle depending on what four inch incremental transfer or turn that you made. So I'm not gonna bail on this. And then I'm gonna lay flat with him. Like, but why? Like, I don't understand what you're thinking is if you're gonna lay flat with this leg, like the artery's sitting here. So I'm gonna lay with both legs like this flat and nothing's gonna generate. And then if he just keeps sitting next to me, 
I wanted to press bone and skin. If we back up, before I dismounted, I told you that you had hyper focus on this artery. So when I'm dismounting here, this was all about just pushing the skin up. So wouldn't I want this in a period, like a triangle set like this? But I'm gonna lay both legs next to him and then nothing is gonna generate from my lower half. And then if he turns the other way, I'm gonna be late on that turn. Like, so meaning this, like for some reason I'm like this, right? And if I would prefer that I could use this back leg to be here to push up into this artery, right? I also, in case he were to turn in because we're gonna go four step. Now he turns in and my knee was here and I go, damn, this freaking guy, I'm not gonna get him now, right? So I got a bail on this, but my legs were cocked like this anyway, right? Because I wasn't letting him sit here. I also, in case he turned too much, and now this is about read and reaction, this goes into you going, man, I thought I could finish this. And I don't blame you. It's like such a great percentage move that you potentially could especially these gas and stuff. But this leg right here, it has to be here. Like it just can't lay flat because now the opening, when he makes the turn, the knee shields are gonna come in. So I wanted this leg here anyway because let's worry about this leg for a second. And Nathan made the turn and I was like this, I'm going, damn, he's turning too much. Okay, so I hold the position and now I'm up. And I'm, cl I'm clamping onto this arm because I'm not gonna let you finish rotating. But I've blocked in here. I've blocked these shields. You want to get these shields between me. I get it. You want to recover guard, right? And guard is about getting these legs back into the equation. So there's a reason why this thing had multiple effects. One is I don't want you sitting next to me so that you change the angle of my triangle so that this leg is driving up into the artery. I'm not trying to drive up into your ear. I'm trying to drive up into this artery. So my triangle sets like this because this is my back leg pushing up in here. I also don't want you turning into me. I also, in case for some reason, I don't like the look, I wanna be able to have position on here where I own the inside pocket and a, and a blade of my shin at the belly line to stop your ex explosive rotation. I also am like this. So when you turn on me and I'm driving, okay, so I drop you and I collect you. And now I have a cross body pin where my kneecap's on this side of the hip and I have this elbow. So I'm gonna ask you, you are like this. I'm gonna ask you to go vertical, don't lose this. It's not the end of the world if you do. What is the biggest, you're not gonna tell me that he's gonna turn away from you. If he's turning away from you, we, he's got an issue that he doesn't know anything. Because you're gonna just give me your back like that, okay? So if he's turning in, like what's the worst? I miss everything and he comes to turtle, right? Okay, so I'm gonna fight for this turtle position north south or I'm gonna transfer to this quadrant. So I've never left him. Like I stayed dominant the whole time. I realized like I'm not gonna go gassing myself. I'm not gonna redline myself at 95% and be done. Like we're gonna keep fighting. I've got to 60, 70%, you didn't go to sleep. Let me transfer it again. Okay, so I was like this. And now I just told you about the dismounting. You were like this. You slid your leg out and I'm here. Now Ethan's making a turn. I'm like, uh oh, he made too much of a turn. Okay, so I drop and I hold. I was perfectly set here that I'm not gonna lose you. Regardless, whether I end up north-south and I got to get back or you come up too quick and I transfer to this quadrant or I try to take your legs depending on how you bring them in. But I just caught the elbow line, okay? So instead, I was like this. This is where I was. And now he turns on me. So I drop this grip and I come right here. Now I've gotten a full cradle. I'm looking to see where I go with this. I could potentially drive him back into a mounted or a neon belly. I'm not a big believer in no gi neon belly. I just think it's a, it's a fake move. Um, it just really is. Like you can't tell me like in a high level guy, if you're the smaller guy and now he's got jacked arms and stuff, that you're gonna hold a neon belly. He's gonna throw you. He's gonna knee you in the ass so far and then you're gonna go flying over there. So that's not, it's not real. Like I get it when he's wet or you're black belt and he's a blue belt and he doesn't know what he's doing and you're riding and you'll see one of the black belt instructors. It's not real. That's just, you can't hold a man down without those gi grips uh, on a high level game. Like, and you have the disadvantage of size, strength, and skills equal. Like, you're not holding that man down. So let's not even go there. But potentially you could drive it back. So you could drive him back this way and look to mount or get him up. But I'm gonna say no. We're just gonna hold the position. So we were like this, and he turned on me. So I grabbed and cradled. I'm looking to lace this outside hand so I have a good grip on you. 
you can't finish your turn up until you can finish this turn and retract this to your lap muscle to come to turtle. That's why I'm asking you to shelve high on this because I want the opportunity to take this hand and lace it through on the other side so that now I'm this way. So I had access to hunt with this hand the whole time. This hand had no other function. I can hit you, I can wedge over here, I can push you. Like This hand has only had one pr purpose at this point, is to hunt. This had an elbow grip, this had a shoulder pin, I'm cross diagonal on my pin. So now I have the opportunity to take this hand and lace it back onto this side. So I'm still on my elbow cat, but I'm punching my hand through. Now we're going right into our darts, right? We're gonna cradle the head, latch this on, right? We can slide through, hook over the top. You pick it. But we had four sequences, which is a great drill you can do, that within four inches, everything changed. Right, it changed in the beginning, it changed on the angle, it changed again when he recovered, it changed how I came up, and everything on this tripod had a reason. Okay, let's part of him and try it. You can do them any way you want.